Now before I talk about this, the Miki 25mm cinema lens, I want to talk about the slider shots you've just seen in the intro and that you will see later on in the demo video. They were done with this, which is a new slider I've been sent to test from a company called Zippon, and this is the Micro 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a review on this at the end of the video. So if you want to learn more about the slider, wait till the end of the video and there'll be a short review on this slider. Now let's talk about this, the Miki 25mm T2.2 cinema lens from Micro Four Thirds. They also do an E mount and an X mount of this model as well. And I'll put a link to them in the description down below so you can go and check them out for yourselves. If you have a Fuji X camera or you have a Sony E mount camera, they do do lenses for them that cover a bigger sensor. This lens is designed for the Micro Four Thirds system. So that's a two times crop. So this is a 25 mil and it actually becomes a 50 mil in full frame terms. Now this lens was sent to me um, to review and as with all my reviews, you'll get my honest feedback. This lens is full metal construction. It's got some weight to it. Now it weighs 557 grams, so it's quite heavy for a compact 25 mil micro four third lens. Um, the construction of the focus is really smooth. It is incredibly smooth actually for a lens that costs 399 US dollars. So it goes from infinity all the way down to 25 centimeters close focus and distance. And again, it has a nice hard stop. Now the T stop goes from T 2.2 to T22 and it's smooth like the focus ring too. It's declipped so you get a nice smooth transition. Now the T-stop is a transition of light, that's what the T stands for, that goes through the lens and hits the sensor and that's how it's measured. So you can have all different focal lengths but the T-stops will all be the same, there'll be no different. As with F-stop, it's actually a measurement of the actual focal length and the size of the aperture as well. So it comes down to that too. If you want me to talk more about the difference between T-stop and F-stop, let me know down in the comment section and I'll be happy to cover that. But it is quite a long process to discuss all of this. But once you understand it, it makes sense that the T-stop and the F-stop are different. Now, I wanted to go out and test this lens in the real world, but sadly we're in lockdown still in New Zealand. So what I decided to do was to shoot a video of me making a coffee, basically. Now I use this lens and my Panasonic GH5. Now this was just in standard 4K, 50p, 8-bit, standard profile. So the video you're going to see was shot with the GH5, the Miki 25mm lens, and also the slider shots were shot with this, the Micro 2. Now a couple of things with that video, I don't make the coffee in my coffee shop. I have amazing staff that do that and they make beautiful looking coffee. That's probably one of my best looking coffees you've just seen. And I didn't want to use up my good milk because it's quite hard to get products at the moment in New Zealand obviously. And I used some old milk for that video. Now while I was packing all my gear up after the video, I happened to start drinking that coffee. I don't know why, I picked it up and started drinking it and the taste was disgusting. I can still taste it now. That milk was seven days out of date. Yeah, it, it wasn't good, so I didn't enjoy that. So that's just a little bit of a story behind that video. But let's talk about the lens and what I think of it. This is a really well-made lens. It feels three to four times its value to be truthful. This is only 399 US dollars, and it feels better than some lenses I paid $1,500 for. It's really nice, and it fits really well on the GH5. Now, personally, I like to use prime lenses for my video work. I'm not a fan of zoom lenses. I don't actually use any zoom lenses for my video work. The only time I use a zoom is like at the moment on the S1H and the S1R. I have my photography lenses on that because I'm shooting a video for you guys and I can adjust it more for my YouTube videos. But for my clients' work, I mostly use prime lenses and these are really nice lenses to use on the GH5 and the Z-Cam. Now a couple of things I don't like about this lens is it has no contact points on the back of the lens to communicate with the camera. So I don't know what T-stop I'm in. I would like to see that on my monitor 
or on the back of the screen of the camera to know what T-stop I'm in so I can adjust it. That would be really nice, but it's not a deal breaker to be truthful. Now, another thing I don't like is the T-stop and the distance scale are painted onto the black paint with white paint. It's not laser etched. It would have been nice if they just spent that bit of time, that bit of extra money on laser etching that in there so these markings will stay on there much longer. Because the problem is, if you're gonna be hand holding this a lot, with say a GH5, your sweaty hands and your skin rubbing on it, this paint's gonna come off. And that's a shame because it's such a nice lens and it just makes it feel a little bit cheap, to be truthful. But apart from those two things, there's nothing else wrong with this lens. It's an outstanding lens. To be honest with you, I like it so much. I've actually ordered a couple more from Amazon. I'm not sure when they're gonna get here with the way the world is at the moment, but I've actually ordered a couple of these because we can't actually get these in New Zealand. Nobody stocked these in New Zealand. I think these are a nice lens to have, especially if you've got a Z Cam, GH5, GH5S. As I mentioned earlier, the Miki 25mm cinema lens has a 77mm front filter thread. Now that's quite handy because that leads me into my next product I'll be reviewing which are these two filters from a company called Freewell. Now these have magnetic filters, one is an ND and one is a polarizer. Now that video will be coming out in a few days, so remember to subscribe and hit the little bell icon and you'll get a notification when that video comes out. As always, thank you so much for watching. So this is the Micro 2 from Zip-On Slider. It's a compact slider which basically slides nearly double its length. I'll show you what it does. So it goes from one side all the way across to the other side. And it's actually a very, very smooth slider. And as you can see from the videos that you would have seen in the video, the intro video and the test video of this lens, making the coffee basically, it's a really, really nice slider and it can give you a nice added movement to your video. Now, this is set up how I would set it up. Now I've seen a review on this slider and the YouTube reviewer had the legs too wide. He had them like this. So I show you the legs are too wide open. And he complained about it and said it was designed wrong. It's not designed wrong, it's just he didn't know how to use the legs basically. I've been using sliders for years. The camera goes there and what he was complaining about is it tips, even with a small camera like this. Well, if you actually bring the legs closer together, you'll actually see the camera doesn't tip up, okay? I'm actually flexing the slider and I'm actually pushing quite hard on that. So he'd actually got that wrong, which is a shame because it kind of makes it look like they designed this slider wrong and they didn't, they designed it right. And it's a really nice design. It's very, very smooth. Now you'll notice that I'm able to turn the camera. Now this is not actually an accessory they sell, it's an accessory I've put on there. Now I've been using one of these for years on all my sliders um, and it is a photography pano head basically, designed for taking panoramics like this. So they're very cheap. They're about 20, 30 US dollars. I'll put a link to them in the description down below so you can actually see what it is and check it out yourself. The nice thing with this is it's compact. It keeps a slider compact. I don't have to carry a big bulky video head to get a parallax shot with a slider. So it's very easy to use. You can load the camera on there quite nicely. And then you can get these nice sweeping movements like that, which adds a little bit extra to your sliding shots. That's just something I've been using for years and it's very handy and it's much cheaper and it's much smaller than the video head. Now there are two locking pins here. So when you put it back in, yeah, locks away and it won't move. It makes it really secure. Now the legs fold away underneath and you can actually take this base plate off as well. So it makes it more compact. Now Zippon actually have a motor system for this now, electronic motor. Um, I don't have that at the moment, but I heard very good things about it. Um, you can add it onto an, an existing slider like this if you already have one or you can actually purchase it as a full kit I put the link to those products down below in the description. This is a really nice slider It's really well built. It's built like a tank basically and it's not that bad a price If you're looking for a slider to add that little bit extra to your videos, I don't think you can go wrong with this um, It's really well made and it feels like it's gonna last a very long time and it's very compact Especially if you put something like this pano head on there you don't have to carry a big video head to get a little bit extra from your slider. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick review of this slider from Zip-On, the Micro 2.